So that word again, to put to blush, it means to dishonor you. God is not into dishonoring His children. Say, I am a child of God. I'm a son of God. I'm anointed of God. I'm in His grace. And His grace is in me. And God will never shame me or embarrass me or leave me hanging. You know what I'm talking about? Amen. Come on now. You can just say it as a child of God. There ain't no shame for me. So don't ever let anybody tell you shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you. No shame. No shame on you. Isn't that wonderful? He is not going to embarrass you or let you down. If you step out on the water, he, you will walk on water. Do you understand? You think about Peter, remember in the boat, all of the 11 were hanging on to the side. But Peter said, if that's you, Lord, bid me to come. And Jesus said, it is me, and come on. And so he was the only one that stepped out. Did you know that all 12 of them could have walked out on the water, but only one took, a, took the chance and jumped out there, amen? And he walked on water. How many water walkers do I have here today? Praise the Lord, just about as many that want to receive $10 million. All right, not too bad. Praise the Lord. There's hope for us all, isn't there? Hope, praise God, maketh not ashamed. So what does he mean by that? It won't put you to blush. Why? Because he says, because the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. What does it mean, shed abroad? It means it was poured forth and it was gushed out to run all over. Is that, that's how much God's love was poured out on you. Did you know that God he's, has many different names to describe his person, and his person and what he does and who he is? The Bible says he's El Shaddai. That's right. He, then he appeared to Abraham. He said, I am Almighty God. I am El Shaddai. The word El Shaddai means the God who is more than enough. That's your God right now. He's not the God that's just enough. He's not the God that's barely enough. He's the God that's more than enough. In other words, when he fills your glass, we just fill it up to the edge of the brim. But God fills it and he spills it. And that's what that word poured out in your heart means. It means gushed out to spill over. And I want you to know the reason why you're filled with the love of God is so that it can spill out all over. Amen. Praise God. So when he does what God does, he fills up the cup and it runs out over and it goes on to the table. And you know what we call that? We call that waste. But God calls that abundant life, excessive living. Did you know that you've been called to a life of excess? Don't let somebody tell you we shouldn't get into excess, brother. Well, if you don't want your excess, I'll take yours. Amen. I'm going to take mine and yours because he's the God who's more than enough and he spills it. He fills you to spill over. Amen. Not just enough to keep on the inside of you, but he wants it to be shown on the outside of you all over. His grace to be seen all over. He wants your grace on your finances. He wants your grace in your body. He wants your grace in your family. He wants to spill it out all over. He's a God who gushes it out. Amen. Come on now. Shout yes, somebody. Praise God. Amen. He's a God who's more than enough. Amen. And so when he fills your cup, he fills it up. It spills out over the table, but that's still not enough because he's a God who wants to spill it out over the table onto the floor. We call that waste, but God calls that abundant life. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's my introduction. Glory. Come on now. It's kind of hard to take notes on that, huh? I'll slow it down a little bit. Woo, come on now. Yes, hope maketh not ashamed 
because of the love of God that's been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. In order for us to really walk in the fullness of God, then we're going to have to get a revelation of the love of God. And I quoted to you over there in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 16. Remember the prayer that Paul prayed. He prayed, I bow my knee unto the Father of the family. Say family. In heaven and on earth. One family. And thy will be done on earth as it is where? In heaven. What do you think it's like in heaven? I think it's pretty excessive. Don't you think so? People say we shouldn't, you know, drive a fancy car. Somebody said one time to one of our members in this church, because they got a new car, and they, they said to them, you know, as Christians, I don't think Christians should own new cars and nice things like that. Well, you know what? If you don't want it, I'll take yours, and I'll bless somebody else with it. Amen. Isn't that a strange kind of thinking? I wonder where they think they're going to be living in heaven. They're going to be living on, Dort, on you know, Grumble Alley like Brother Higgin used to say. Give me, a little, give me a little cabin down here in the corner of glory land. Well, you know what? God is a God who is more than enough. And he will do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think. Do you want to know what God's definition of a cabin is? It's a mansion, my God. Amen. If you don't want to live the abundant life here, then you're not going to like heaven too much. Are you listening? Amen. Amen. And I want you to know it's not 10 karat gold. It's just pure gold all the way through. I don't even know what pure gold is it. What is it? 21 carats? 24 carats? What is it? 24. It's 24 carats in there. Ain't no mixture. Wall and grace, 10 karat gold. How about 24? Pure stuff, right? I want you, you know, I'm giving you pure grace here today. It ain't mixed up with any other kind of metals. It's pure gold. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, glory to God. So I was just reviewing a little bit. Where, what did he say? He said this. I bow my knees in the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Who ha- fa- families of heaven and earth are, are named that he would grant to you. What does it say? Come on, help me out here. That we would grant you what? According to the riches of his glory. According to the riches of what? Of his glory. He said, the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former house, says the Lord. For the silver and the gold are mine, says the Lord. God's not coming back for a broke, poor, defeated church. He's coming back for a church that's receiving the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Amen. Woo, right there. And that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Next, amen. That Christ... Come on, <clears throat> that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith, that you being rooted and grounded, what? In love, gushing out, overflowing, spilling out, and may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, length, depth, and height, and what? <sighs> to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be what? Come on, that you may be what? Filled with all the fullness of God. Until we get a revelation of the love of Christ for us, we're never going to understand the fullness of God. Amen. How much he loves you. Amen. God's not sitting around thinking about your sins, shortcomings, faults, failures, anything like that. What he's thinking about is the blood of Jesus that has redeemed you. Amen. And that blood cries out, yes and amen. For his name is yes and his name is amen. And all the promises of God in him are yes and amen. God says yes and amen to your healing. He says yes and amen to your prosperity. He says yes and amen to your peace and joy, unspeakable and full of glory. He says yes and amen. Glory to God. So therefore, you are filled with might. Strengthen, say, I am strengthened strengthened. with might might. by His Spirit Spirit. in the inner man. man. You know what that word might is? Dunamis, miraculous power. God has made you a miracle worker. Amen. And your mouth and your heart, and when you speak the word out of your mouth, you set yourself up for a miracle. Isn't that wonderful? Praise the Lord. Amen. I want you to know faith receives. Say it with me. Faith Faith. accesses Accesses. the grace of God, God. the favor of God. God. Aren't you glad for that? that? 
All right, praise the Lord. Well, I want you to know in the inner man, in the inner man, Smith Wigglesworth used to make a statement. I loved it. He said this. He says, I'm a thousand times bigger on the inside than I am on the outside. Amen. Did you know you're a thousand times bigger and maybe 10,000 times bigger on the inside than you are on the outside? Why? Because we serve a big God. Jesus is Lord, and I'm not. <laughs> Aren't you glad? Amen. But we serve and honor Him. Hallelujah. And we're one with Him. And as He is, so are we. Yeah, you got that one down, don't you? As He is, so are we in this world. Getting back to Romans very quickly here. Um, so uh, love maketh not a shame, or the hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth or demonstrates his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Who does it leave us now? Huh? How many times did you got preached to when, before you were saved? By the saints of God. And they come out there and tell how much Jesus loves you and how forgiven you are. And then after you got saved, they brought you to church and condemned you all day long about your sins. I think Jesus loved me better as a sinner. Then I, before, then after I got, I started thinking that after a while. I think, you know what? I felt like God loved me more when I was on that street living that life, you know, that I was living. And there's talk, always tell me about how much God loved me. And now that I'm saved, God's mad at me all the time. What's up with this? Come on now. Amen. And the Bible says, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of them that bring glad tidings of good things, Right? So people take that, yeah, I'm going to go out and win some souls because I want some beautiful feet. They don't read the rest of the message. The, and, the, and, and the rest of the statement is, and saith unto Zion, thy God reigns. Yeah. Ooh, what about the church now? Yeah, how beautiful are my feet that I say unto you, O Zion, your God reigns and you reign with him and he reigns in you. Amen. Amen. That's the gospel. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I think when we come to church, we should leave feeling better than we came in. But in a lot of places you go, when you come to church, you leave, feel worse when you leave than when you came in. Amen. I don't think that's how Jesus intended it to be. Who says unto Zion, thy God reigns. The church is also Zion. Israel is Zion. We're not taking that away from them. We're not replacing them. But the church is also grafted in. And the church is Zion. Glory to God. All right, so look what else he says here. And so that, um, look at that. So God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more. Say much more. Much more. Wow, I didn't think there was more. Much more than being now justified. That's you and me. Being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Oh, God's going to get you. We got to show that video sometime. God going to get you. You better watch out. Jesus is going to get you. I want you to know he's done got you. He's already got you. And you're his. And he's never going to let you go. And you'll be saved from wrath through him. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad? All right, so now verse 10, so for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God. Hello? If while I was an enemy, I was reconciled, where does it leave me now? Because I ain't no enemy. I may make mistakes. I may miss it. But that does not make me an enemy. Are you listening? Amen. So... Again, much more being now justified by his blood. Oh, I read that. Verse 10, come on, help me now. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more, here we go again, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. What's that word saved mean? Are you ready? As soon as I find it myself. 
To be healed, delivered, set free. Look at it, it means this. It's so good. It's sozo. It means to deliver, to protect. Much more. We shall be protected by his life. We shall be, it means to be preserved. We'll be preserved by his life. Ooh, that's so good, isn't it? It also means this. It means to be healed by his life, to do well by his life, and to make whole by his life. I think that's a pretty good message that Paul preached to the church. Shall I preach that message? I'm just quoting him who's quoting the Holy Ghost, who's quoting Jesus. You know, if I'm just quoting him, it's amazing how folks get mad at you for quoting Paul and Jesus and the Holy Ghost. Oh, no, no, you know, these people, they all just want to do is preach the good news and good things. But we need to preach sin. Why do I need to preach sin? When Jesus condemned sin and Jesus took sin and became sin and made me righteous. Why do I want to preach sin? What good does that do anybody to preach sin? I like to preach the solution to sin. Are you with me? People get focusing on sin. You don't preach sin to the sinner. You preach Christ. That's what Philip did. He went down to Samaria to a bunch of old heathen, pagan folks just like he had been. Amen. And what did he do? Preach sin? No, he preached Christ to them. He preached the answer and the solution. Amen. I'm sure he made them aware that we're all sinners, correct? And we need to be saved, correct? But he preached the answer. He didn't focus on sin the whole time. All right. So look what happens now. And I'm just about done. Really? Wow, this is an amazing thing here. So look at this. Wow. I mean, come on. I'm impressing myself. It ain't me. It's the Holy Ghost, you know. So we'll be saved by his life. And look at verse 11. And let's read it together. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have now received the atonement. Wow. Did you know that that word joy is the same word, he, the same Greek word that we read and I did a word study um, and where it says we glory in him. It's the same exact Greek word or we rejoice in him. Well, now he says this, we joy in God. Same Greek word, and here's what it means. It means to boast. Remember, I got into a little word study about boasting. Some of you took some notes. Did my note takers come to the second service? Praise God. So what does the word, what does the word, Letitia, was she's quoting it while we was praying. She's praying it on out to God. Amen. Boasting. We what? We joy in Christ. We boast in Christ. How many ever heard somebody boast? Now, there, now, when you do the word study in the Greek, you'll find it says good and bad. So there's a good boasting and there's a bad boasting. In this case, how many of y'all would agree that it's good boasting? Because he's telling us to joy or boast in Christ. What is the word boast, Miss Letitia? To, be, to speak excessively about one's what? One's accomplishments, possessions, possessions and, and conquests. 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 Yeah. That's what boasting means. Yeah. He says we should be speaking excessively about one's. Who's the one? Jesus' is. Jesus' is accomplishment for us on our behalf. Jesus' possessions, which he has given us all things freely to enjoy. And what? Jesus' conquest. He, conque he conquered for us. And the Bible says we were in him when he was crucified. We were in him when he was buried. We were in him when he was raised. We were in him when he ascended. And we're still in him when he sat down because we sat down with him. So we boast in Christ. When trial, tri tri you know what I'm saying. Tests, trials, and tribulations try to come into your life. The Bible says we're to boast in tribulation. Boast what? I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. By his stripes I'm healed if you've got an affliction. Amen. If you've got a financial challenge, he supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Jesus himself remembering the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich yet for your sakes he became poor so that you through his poverty might become rich. I'm boasting in him. Him. And that's, we have the grace of God to do that. Isn't that wonderful? 
That's one of my favorite words when I preach now, I noticed, is wonderful. Yeah. Glory to God. So look at what he means when he says this. We joy, we joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now, say now, received, received, come on, received the redemption. All right, what does the word receive mean? Are you ready for this? It means to accept. And what does um, atonement, I said redemption, have received the atonement. What does atonement mean? Atonement in this particular text is in the Greek. It means exchange. Isn't that wonderful? Think about it. That we have what? We have received the exchange. Ha! And that word receive there in the Greek, it translates this, to accept. And what was exchanged? He exchanged our sin so that we could in turn have his righteousness. That's why he was the sacrifice. Because even in old covenant times when they sacrificed an animal, they would bring the animal before the priest and he would look at the animal to see if the animal was spotless. He did not examine the person that was bringing it because the person had sin in them. He did not examine the person. He examined the sacrifice. I want you to know that Jesus is our perfect sacrifice. Jesus passed the test. And what would happen is they would lay their hands, the person that was guilty would lay their hands and impart the sin into that sacrifice, that animal. And then in turn, the innocence and the purity of the animal was transferred to the person. And Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. He was the final sacrifice. And our sins were imparted into him so that in exchange, say exchange. exchange. Have you accepted the exchange? So that in exchange, he, you would receive his righteousness. You would receive his power and his authority and his dominion. And everything that Jesus possesses has been transferred to you. And so is it scriptural for someone to, be, to, to accept Christ? Because I heard someone say one time, not one person, I've heard it a number of times, well, we don't do the altar calls because the idea or the terminology accepting, you know, have you accepted Christ into your heart, is not really scriptural. We don't find that list in the Word. Well, guess what? You don't read your Bible in the Greek because you need to understand it was written in the Greek. And to let you know it is biblical based upon this text right here to accept the atonement accept the exchange accept the fact that Jesus exchanged your sins so he can impart his righteousness to you and it's totally by faith isn't it and so the word there atonement means this exchange the rest of it also means this are you ready this is going to bless you it means restoration to the divine favor have you accepted your restoration to the divine favor that's what the atonement means in the Greek so it is our responsibility as believers to fully accept the exchange, the divine, the, the, the uh, whatever, the restoration to the divine favor. Amen. And uh, so the word accept there also is a biblical, it is, it, is it biblical to take Christ as Savior? Of course it is. And that word also accept or receive means to take. It means to seize. And here's the context of it. In the Greek, this is the, this is the tone of it. It means this. It means to be offered something and to accept the offer. Are you ready? To be offered something and to accept the offer. Has anybody ever been offered something? And have you ever accepted the offer? Have you ever been offered something and you rejected the offer? All of us have in different kind of business deals, you know. But the reality is this. We offer Jesus Christ. The Bible offers, God offers Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And he does what? As the atonement, as the exchange for your sins. And it is up to anybody who hears the gospel to make the choice whether to accept the offer or reject the offer. And that's what's going to happen on that final day is people that are had their names are written in the Lamb Book of Life. Here's what it really is, is this. It's not so much that their name got put into the Lamb's Book of Life. It's if their name was blotted out. 
Why? Because Jesus died for every man, woman, and child and provided salvation for every single one of them and really by faith put every one of their names in the Lamb's book of life and they have it in this life to accept the offer. God being a faith, God already put their name in there. But if they decide, no, I don't want to believe on Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior, I reject the offer, then what happens? The Bible says their name is blotted out. So is salvation for everybody? Oh, yes, it is for everybody. But all you have to do is accept the offer. And your name will stay there. Hmm? Does anybody want to receive the offer today? Is everybody here saved? Let me look around. Hmm? Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Father God, for the wonderful offer. Now, it's not just to get born again offer. The, the offering receiving the atonement is restoration to the divine favor. Is that right? So you, how many of y'all know you can receive the full restoration of divine favor in every area of your life? Hallelujah. Is this the gospel of grace? It is the gospel of grace. This is the gospel that Paul preached. I'm just quoting him. Amen. Well, I hope you were blessed by the message today. I like to um, always close our program out by giving folks an opportunity to make the most important decision that they will ever make in their life. I say not just this life, but eternal life. Because every one of us are going to live forever. You are a spirit being. You have a soul and you live in a physical body. And your spirit and your soul live on for eternity. The question is, is where will you spend eternity? And that choice, of course, is left up to you. The Bible says that Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. He came to save men's lives. And so he is the Savior, he is the Redeemer, and he wants to be the Lord of your life. So I invite you right now to receive Jesus Christ, not just as your Savior, but as your Lord, meaning this, he's the Lord of your decisions, he's the Lord of your choices that you make in life, he's the Lord of your lifestyle. And that's how you distinguish between a Christian, one who says that they believe in Jesus, and another one who who has received Jesus Christ as Lord of their life. And I believe that there are some out there right now, you say that you're a Christian, but Jesus is really not the Lord of your life. Well, it's time to surrender wholly and completely to him. So if you are one who says, yeah, I go to church, well, that's good. But is Jesus Lord of your life? And so I invite you all, everyone, to receive receive him as Lord and Savior right now by praying this simple prayer. Pray this out loud to the Lord. Mean it with all of your heart. Say this, dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I confess I am a sinner and I am need of a Savior. I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. God, I believe that you raised him from the dead. And your word says, If I believe it, if I confess it, then I would be saved. And so today, I confess Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Lord, I ask you to come into my heart and save me now. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer and you meant it, I believe that you got born again in your spirit. Now it's time for you to get plugged into a local church. And I want to invite you to any one of our services on Sunday at 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. Also, we have Wednesday night Bible study at 7 o'clock. Help us, uh, well, come and let us help you grow spiritually. God bless you. And beside the river Thank you for watching Demonstrations of Faith, a ministry outreach of Faith Alive Christian Center in Reno, Nevada. If you don't have a home church, we invite you to come and connect with us. We have ministry for the entire family on Sundays at 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. and Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Our Connect Youth Ministry meets on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights. Child care is available for all services. Our location is 120 Hubbard Way, half block east of the Pepper Mill in Reno. You can find us online at faithalive.net 
or by searching for Faith Alive at all social media outlets. Thanks for watching and join us next week for Demonstrations of Faith. And it's flowing to